it is currently what, 4.17 my time. So, let's go over what occurred. Um, we did a quick session, or we did a session last week in Rolling Blind, and I never went over with you guys what happened. So, Lydia um, Lydia had taken over the Crush Company, and the Crush Company is the official name of Cora's mercenary company that she's the captain of, okay? And... After they got out of the Feywild, they ran into the, what was it, the Terror Company? Yeah, the Terror Company, which is led by Midas, who is in my antagonist on the Material Plane, Captain Midas. Uh, So after that, after that, uh, they left that, they ran into Horse Lord Colt. He told them that he doesn't really know what the Terror Company is, and he also told them about. Horse Lord Ivy. Now they realized that the Terror Company was heading in the direction of either the Trolls or the Gnomes. They weren't quite sure. And they're about 350 giants strong, which is pretty impressive. I'm going to give him a second in command who's going to lead the split giants because I think I think I'm going to have one attack the gnomes and one attack the trolls one group And I'll put 150 under the second in command. And 200 under Midas. Um, the Crush Company is younger. They have more... <laughs> They have more giants left, but they're generally a slightly lower level. Um, so they have 400 giants. The Crush Company... Oops. Yeah, the Crush Company has... Uh, just going to make this the whole crush company. So they have 350. Gilbert Okay, so Lydia had taken charge she was a level 7 
Um, whoops. I didn't know I could do that. Um. Yep. And uh, so Lydia had taken over. She's a level seven fighter. Uh When Cora came back, Lydia challenged her to a fight. And under the rules, I made it so that that meant that um, Lydia got to choose the win, but Cora got to choose how the fight was fought. Cora chose to fight um, with fists. And, oh, hey, Rick, good morning. No, it's, it's totally morning for me. It's four here. It's going pretty good. Um, Lydia chose to use, or er, Cora chose to use fists and completely wiped the floor with Lydia. Cora's only a level four, but she's monk, which gave her a huge advantage. And so she took back over the company, decided not to kill Lydia. And put Lydia in charge of guarding the four seeds that will allow... Yeah, sorry, I wasn't watching the chat. Um, left Lydia in charge of guarding the four seeds that will allow the uh, green hag that they made a deal with to teleport into the material plane. And give them back the rest of their memories. So this is an interesting thing. She chose Gilbert, who is also um, a weak giant, to be her second. And uh, the main reason she did that is because she, find, she, likes, she finds Gilbert attractive. And yes, I know it's spelt like Gilbert, but that's how she wanted to pronounce it, so I went with it. Um, and that's most of what happened in the last time we played. And yeah, I did just condense about three hours of play into a ten minute explanation, I think. So... How's it going, Rick? Me, I'm very tired right now, by the way. I still haven't gotten into any of the Mind Flayer stuff. Didn't get deep into what Horse Lord Ivy's doing. But she hired Midas to uh, attack both the trolls and the gnomes. And to make it, try and make it look like the trolls hired them to attack the gnomes, and make it look like the gnomes hired them to attack the trolls. Um, but we'll see how that all works out. I don't want to give it away too much. So. That's about where Rolling Blind's at. deal with nations right now. Dragons are always fun. Oh. This is fun. Um, I'm 
this is a list of the things I try to have prepared during an adventure. Things that I can just throw in uh, at need. So, if you look, I try and have three main NPCs. And I have descriptions down here. Oh, down here. First thing I do is I split the main NPCs and I give them each two of the following six traits. So I give, I make one like a patron, supplies, jobs, one a magical guide, one a merchant, one a land guide, some mystery with them that I don't always decide beforehand, and a safe place for people to store their stuff and sleep. That's my three main NPCs. And you can see that in Rolling Blind, when I switched to the Material Plane, which we just did, I've got Horse Lord Colt as the land guide in the quest one. I've got Anton as the merchant and the safe place. And I've got Queen Elena as the magical guide and the mysterious one. And they're kind of spread out. Normally I have all those in one city, but I think I want them spread out. I like to have lots of enemies. I like to have one main antagonist who has two lieutenants, and then I like two sub-antagonists with a lieutenant each. As you see in Rolling Blind, I have three different enemies, main enemies. And I still have to figure out their lieutenants. Um, I don't know who's going to be the main enemy yet. I haven't decided. And I don't know who their lieutenants are yet. But I kind of just rolled this up. Literally right before we started playing. So I've still got some time to work on it. Uh, the next thing I like to do is 24 NPCs extra NPCs and if you come here I think I have well over 24 just names and race ready to go um, that way I can throw people in when necessary Oops. after that I like to have some traps that I can just throw in. I do not have any traps here. This is where I would normally keep the traps. And I just don't have them. But I should. I should throw in some traps. should throw in some skill challenges too. Um, I often like to run my traps as skill challenges or as high damage things. So I can run it either way. I like to have five encounters planned out. And what I mean by that is I'll often have different monsters and traps in here, but an encounter is going to have multiple uh, monsters from the monster stats area. And I can double up and cross things. I just need a few things pre-planned, ready to go, so I can throw stuff down without having to worry about other planning too much. I like to have a lot of room descriptions, which I really need, never really did. And that is probably one of the my biggest flaws. A good room description looks like this. Um, you go with a lush room. And then you kind of just describe it. 
Um, you step into the room. Bright lights line the walls. You notice the elegant etchings on the door. Blah, blah, blah. And then you have a lush room and you'll often put uh, like an insert item here based on the type of room that they're walking into. Are they walking into an office? Are they walking into uh, a merchant's place? Different things like that. And depending on where they're walking into, they you replace the item. So you'll have a nice little description and then replace the item. And you put half a dozen different room descriptions and no matter where they want to go, you're ready for it. Uh, I like to have some spell books and some treasures. I like some mundane treasures and I like some magical treasures that are specific to the person. And even the mundane treasures, I sometimes like to give them things that the characters will like. Like, mm. if I were to make a mundane, a new mundane treasure for Kazumi, because that one's already been used, I would add in a few bottles of good wine. Boom. Or add in 1d4. Everyone likes to roll. My players love to roll for treasure. 1d4 bottles of good wine. Boom. And that is how you, that is how I pre-plan stuff. And then I'll have everything ready. And no matter what ends up happening during the game, because different things happen, you never know. My player, I'm prepared for it. It's, I call it, um, insertable preparation because all these things that I'm preparing can be insertable in different places. And that's the goal. Um, I think I'm going to get off now because it is 4.30 a.m. And I need to get ready for work. Have a good day.